everybody, it's Kaylee. I'm back with another what sold from last week video. In today's video, I'll be talking about all of my sales on eBay and Poshmark. And if you're new here, I sell on eBay and Poshmark. I'm an online reseller, which means I go to thrift stores. That's where I choose to find items for cheap. And then I flip them online for their true potential to save them from the landfill. If you guys are interested on learning how to do this yourself, make sure to subscribe to the channel down below and hit that notification bell. I do videos on all kinds of reselling topics, most of it educational and how to. Every week I like to come on and share what my sales were and then pull some of those items and show you what sold so you know what to look for while you're at your local thrift store. Let's dive in. Let me also just mention that this week has been a whirlwind and we have been really behind. So I'm still impressed with our sales given how behind we are. Okay, now let's really dive in. So everything that you see here on the screen happened between September 11th through September 17th. That is a Sunday through a Saturday. A little bit behind on the what sold videos, but starting to catch up so that they're week to week. In total, I sold 137 items between two platforms, which were eBay and Poshmark eBay was definitely the breadwinner this week, as you can see on those numbers. My gross sales combined were $4,243.08, and my average sale price was $30.97. Estimated cost of goods for everything that sold last week was $548, making my estimated net, which is the gross sales less the cost of goods, fees, and shipping costs, $2,508.23. On eBay, I sold 91 items. On Poshmark, I sold just 46. Gross sales on eBay were almost $3,000, and then they were just over $1,300 on Poshmark. We're going to jump in to the eBay sales first, and I do have a lot to show you. So first up on eBay is this Burberry Brit men's long sleeve button-up shirt. We did say that this was new without tags because there was evidence to support that it was new without tags. Um, looking back, I probably would have listed this pre-owned just to be safe, but as we talked about at the office with our listers, we did think it was new without tags, but I probably should have told them to post it as pre-owned just to cover our butts, but the sale went through and we got good feedback, so I think everything is okay in that manner, but just, just a tip to you guys. It, even if it's like in perfect condition, if it doesn't have the tag, might consider just going ahead and listing it as pre-owned to cover your butts. So this is Burberry Brit, which is a line from Burberry. Burberry Brit and Burberry London, you'd be surprised. They're pretty easy to come across, actually. I have come across them probably at least once a month. And the men's shirts, polos, and stuff like that do really well for me. Uh, we listed this pretty high because we were confident in its condition. Um, and it's just a cotton men's button-up blue shirt. I think one thing that really ups the value on these is this logo right here, having the Burberry logo. And then any kind of plaid that shows, which is their staple plaid, I think that helps to up the value as well. So we paid only 99 cents for this and it sold on an offer for $78 and it took about a month to sell. Next up is a brand I would absolutely pick up in pretty much anything. It's the brand Arcteryx, A-R-C apostrophe T-R-Y-X. I don't think we have a logo to show you, but usually there is, here it is, this little logo down here that's embroidered. I think it's like a fossil. It is a good indicator as well in case the tag is removed, but pretty much anything in Arcteryx we pick up and I'm usually willing to pick it up at full price or pay a little bit up for because it does have a really good sell-through rate and it brings good money. So these were a pair of kind of interesting cargo-y men's type of pants. They said they were a relaxed fit, kind of a smaller size in a size 34, but still did good. You can see we listed the condition as being good pre-owned and that there was some light fading and discoloration. Even with those falls, we listed at $79.99, and it only took, I would say, about a week to sell, and it sold for full asking price. We paid $6.99 for these. Had they not had that fall, they probably would have sold for even more, so definitely keep your eye out for Arcteryx. Next up is a really good brand to look for in women's shoes. It is Rothy's. I've only sold these twice. I've only come across them twice. There is some authentication involved. And one thing I did learn is to take pictures of, like remove the sole and take pictures of this tag inside because it helps to authenticate it. If that's not there, then you might want to make sure that they are real. I've only come across two pairs. They've both been real, but just wanted to throw that out there in case you are a newer reseller who hasn't heard of them. 
They make like knit stretchy material flats that are supposed to be super comfy. I've never found some in my size, so I can't attest to that, but I have heard from some of my viewers as well as reviews online that these are like super comfy work shoes. So we tend to get them. Nikki actually found these at the bins in a shoe bin that had been completely picked over. They were sitting at the bottom and I think people didn't notice them because they're kind of small and these ones were black and they had some dirt on them. If you didn't know, Rothy's are washable, so we figured we could throw them in the wash and get most of that out, which as you can see, we did. And they ended up turning up pretty good. You can see we did note a couple of flaws on the item. Still listed them for $74.98, and they sold on an offer in probably a couple of weeks, I think, for $67.48. Next up is something I took a chance on, and you're going to see a couple of these sales or these types of items during this video, but I heavily focus on men's bags, anything that is like canvassy and leather, messenger style or larger size uh, men's bags. I tend to look for. I don't know why, but they do really well. I pick them up a lot at the bins because regardless of brand, I think that they're valuable and they sell really well for me and for good money. I actually came across this one at a regular Goodwill store. I think you guys saw it during a thrift with me video a few ones back. Um, I decided to get this just because it felt very high quality. It was new with tags. The brand is, I think pronounced Nubly. And it's a really nice canvas leather bag. Again, new with tags. This one was really large. And I just could not pass up the high quality feeling of this bag. So I picked this one up for, I think, $4.99 at a regular thrift store. And the brand did retail for a lot, but the resale value was not always there relative to sell through rate. I took a chance anyways because I did not see this exact bag and I had a larger one. I listed mine pretty high for $69.98. It sold within a couple of weeks for my full asking price, so definitely keep your eye out for men's canvas leather bags. This one is also something I took a chance on. The brand is Masterson. Now, I did look up this particular brand in this particular style, and again, the sell-through rate was not there. I think I looked up just Masterson harness motorcycle boots. Not a great sell-through rate, but I thought mine were a little bit edgier than the other ones because of the fading of the leather. They were very, like, distressed looking, and so I decided to get them. Uh, we paid $4.99 for them. They sold for our full asking price within about a month for $49.97. This one was something we picked up at the bins, and you guys know I love picking up anything wacky or unique, especially at the bins because it is so cheap. Um, this one actually probably did cost us about 4 bucks at the bins because it is a heavy, like really thick robe. We almost left this behind because it came with the belt, which is like, it has to happen <laughs> for me in order to get a robe is for there to be a belt. But as you can see, there were several, several flaws, which we had to note, but there was good evidence that this exact robe um, had sold before and for good money. So we just priced ours a little lower because of the flaws. So we picked it up at the bins. Like I said, we probably picked it up for about four bucks due to the weight. We listed it for $49.99 and it sold um, within, I think, a week of being listed for our full asking price, which is amazing for a bins pickup. Next up is a Lululemon item. I'm sure you guys are familiar with Lululemon, but I always like to point out that they do make men's pieces. This one was lucky enough to have the tag still with it, so we knew that it was a size large. We picked this one up for $4.69 at a thrift store. It sold on an offer to watchers for $49.46. This one did actually take a few months to sell. I think maybe we originally priced it a little bit steep because we priced it at about $55. And like I said, it did take a few months to sell, which is unlike men's Lululemon activewear, but eventually it sold. If you guys didn't know, these three lines here often indicate that they are a men's item. So I always keep my eye out for those three lines while I am sourcing because that Lululemon tag is not always there. Next up is one of my favorite women's brands to sell. It is J. McLaughlin. They're very similar to, I would say, Bowden and Lily Pulitzer where they have like really bold prints and that's what they're known for. This ruched sleeve 
ruched, sorry, ruched half sleep dress um, sold pretty quickly as well. Um, within a couple of months, we paid $5.99 for this dress. And as you can see, it does have a pretty bold print to it. I would say the multicolor in this brand do better. This one was more neutral colored, but it still sold for a really good price, which was our full asking price of $49.97. Next up is a pair of Gymshark leggings. I laughed when I looked back at the sale because we listed this as great pre-owned conditions. He picks for details, but then I noticed this tag hanging here. We actually did have a new tag item, which I think we priced for, but we listed it for pre-owned condition. So I think the buyer was thinking that they were getting a steal. We paid $4.89 for these. They did sell for our full asking price of $39.97. And it took about a couple of months to sell. Here's another example of a men's bag. I have no idea what this brand is. I tried to look it up with like lens and just a quick Google search with the letter B. Could not figure it out. But this was like a waxed canvas, uh, leather combination messenger bag. So as you can see, this is another example, kind of like that new Billy one of something that I will pick up. And I usually just look at these because I notice the canvas and the leather, and then I feel it to see if it's high quality. I listed this one as just an unbranded bag. I listed it for $39.98 and it did sell for our full asking price within about a month. And I picked this up at the bins. It was slightly heavy, so I'd say about $4. This was something I picked up at a consignment clearance sale. I actually did take a chance on this. So this brand is called Oh My Gauze. And if you come across it, definitely has a really high sell through rate and a good following. This one was a set. You can see that it has the tops and the bottom, some pants, size extra, extra large, which was good, bright yellow, which is a more unique color in this brand, and it's just some gauzy cotton. Now I say take a chance on this because there were several stains on this item, but the sell through rate was so good, I figured I could just price it a little lower, and I had a set. So I listed this for $44.98. It took a couple weeks to sell and it sold on an offer for $40.48. And for the whole set, I paid $7.50. Next up is a brand that's been flying off the shelf for me. I think I mentioned this in my last video. It is still, still going strong. And I'm sure you're gonna see more of this brand in the next What Sold video as well. It is Spanx. Spanx uh, by Sarah Blakely has a really good following. Their leggings do really good. There are certain ones that sell better than others, which you'll probably see here in just a moment. This is just a pair of black pull-on pants, but I pick up almost everything in this brand, regardless of size. Size definitely ups the value if you've got a larger size, but regardless of size, I always pick it up because I know it's eventually going to sell for good money. I paid $4.89 for this. We listed for about 40 bucks and it sold on an offer to watcher for $35.00. 97 cents and it took a couple months to sell. Here's another example of one to look out for. This is a faux leather look. No moto or anything, just kind of that wet faux leather. This was a size large. Uh, we got this one for $4.89 as well and we listed it for about 40 bucks as well. It sold on an offer for $35.99 and it took only a week to sell. Next up is something I picked up at the bins. I think you guys might have seen this in a bins surf with me video or one of our vlog style videos, but we got this at the bins. I looked at this because it was kind of unique. It had um, kind of that like straw like feel to it. The words are not coming to me right now, but that straw like feel, <laughs> um, basket weave or whatever, which is kind of unusual for this style of hat. This is called a newsboy hat. So if you see that style, it's definitely worth putting that keyword in your title. And I found that news newsboy styles um, really help to up the value. So I look up almost every newsboy hat that I come across. And this is a style I think people pass on at the bins. This is by the brand Gorin Bros, which in my experience has been a pretty good brand to pick up um, hats in because they have a following. So I got this at the bins. I probably paid less than a dollar for it because it was super lightweight. We listed this for $34.99 and within about a week it sold for our full asking price. Next up is another, no not a bins pickup, I almost said bins. 
I actually paid $6 in total for this pajama set. It was a top, a pair of shorts, and a pair of pants by the brand Lucky Brand. And I paid six knowing that it would probably sell quickly. So I do feel like I paid a little up for what it is. We listed for $29.99. It sold within about a week for our full asking price. Next up is Everlane. This is a brand that tends to sit for me, but it always does end up selling for good money. It usually just takes a little bit longer to sell. This one surprisingly sold within a couple of weeks for our full asking price, which was $29.99. It's just an Everlane kind of thick long sleeve striped shirt and we paid $4.89 for this one. This was a Ben's pickup. This is Vineyard Vines Cashmere. This did have quite a bit of pilling throughout so we did have to note that which is the reason we priced this a little bit lower. Cashmere is super lightweight so we probably paid a couple bucks at the Ben's. We listed for $29.95. It did take several months to sell, three to four months, but it did sell for our Offered a watcher for $26.95. Next up is a pretty cool sale. This is a Steve McQueen by Troy Lee Designs. I'll show you the label here. Uh, T-shirts, and it just said Elsinore Grand Prix on it. The only reason I even looked at this, because I don't usually look at graphic T-shirts if they have a printed on label like this, because that means that they're modern and not vintage. Usually modern T-shirts do not perform as well. The only reason I looked at this was because it felt really high quality and thick. Um, and so we decided to look it up and found that some of these items have a really high sell through rate. So if you come across uh, this, the Steve McQueen by Troy Lee Designs, definitely worth looking into and you'll probably recognize it just from how thick the fabric is. We paid $4.29 for this shirt and we listed it for $34.97. It took a couple months to sell and it sold on an offer to watcher for $31.47. Next up is a Lucky Brand hoodie and this is their line True Indigo. I only picked this up because men's stuff in Lucky Brand performed really well for us and I thought that the style of this was really cool. It's kind of an ombre washed out hoodie put some good keywords in there. It took only a couple months to sell. I paid $4.89. It sold for a full asking price of $24.97. Next up is one of my favorite brands to sell in dresses. It is Bowdoin. I kind of talked before about Jay McLaughlin and how it reminded me of Bowdoin. This is not a typical Bowdoin piece. Usually Bowdoin has some really great prints, but this one was corduroy. And so because it was kind of unique, I thought I would look it up. And the corduroy dresses seem to have a pretty decent sell through rate. I paid $4.99 for this. We listed this a few months ago for $24.96, and it did sell for our full asking price this past week. This is something, I, I guess, a learning experience for me. I picked this up. Altered State is not a brand that performs well for me by any means. They retail for a lot of money. Not sure if you've ever been in their store, but a lot of their stuff goes for, for like about $100, but it does not have a good sell-through rate. I only picked this one up because it was a flax blend and it was a very on-trend style. You can see it's got that very bohemian beachy look. Long sleeve cardigan, so I thought it could also do well in the fall time. And it just it just had that look, you know, that very on-trend look. I paid $4.89 for this at a regular thrift store, which is a risk for me because like I said, this brand does not tend to have a good sell-through rate. So I was really relying on the style and the material. We listed for $27.98. It took a few weeks to sell for our full asking price, which is a really great return on this brand. So keep your eye out for things in this style. Next up is a brand that we really like um, in the plus sizes. This is Catherine's, and this is a size 5X. This brand not everything does well in this, but if you look up certain things like floral 5X top, you're going to find good results because there's enough of it out there. I paid $4.89 for this. We listed it for $24.98. It sold on an offer to watcher for $22.48. And I definitely keep your eye out on some of these exclusively plus size brands because we do have a following with that. This is a newer brand to me. It's Ally Miles. I've been experimenting with this brand as well. Um, when I do comps, the ones that perform the best in this brand are the larger sizes. You can see this one was a size small, 
but I got this one because it was a linen blend and I thought it was very on trend. We paid $4.89 for this. It sold within a week of listing for an offer to watcher of $22.48. So even in lar or smaller sizes, I'm picking these up because they are flying for me. Even if it's just a small return on investment, it's a quick return on investment. Same thing with this brand, it is Life is Good. I paid $2.49 for this shirt. I probably wouldn't pay any more than a couple bucks for this brand, and it's usually one I reserve exclusively for the bins because the max I've been able to get for these shirts lately is 20 bucks, and that was the case with this one. This one sold very quickly for a full assing price of $19.99, and it's just a men's extra large graphic t-shirt, short sleeve crew neck. Um, this brand in both men's and women's performs really well. And like I said, it doesn't sell for a lot, but it sells very quickly, especially if you have a men's piece in a larger size. This is the last one on eBay before we'll move over to some Poshmark sales. This one, you guys. Oh my gosh. This one, this one was the bane of my existence. Do you ever have one of those sales or one of those items where it's like so much happens with it that you just don't want it anymore and that you almost don't even want to sell it? That was this one for me. So I picked this up, I think at the bins. I've had this for over a year now and it originally had some stains. It did not have a tag, no material tag, no size as you can see. It was vintage and it was kind of like, almost like costumey material. I thought it was very prairie style. This is when the prairie style was in. I thought it was very cottage core um, and kind of princessy. I just thought it was very unique and on trend at the time. So I picked it up at the bins even with stains. It eventually ended up selling on Etsy originally when I used to cross post on Etsy. I don't really do that anymore. And the buyer ended up wanting to return it because they noticed some stains that we did not notice. So this came back and I believe that sale was an international sale through Etsy. So it took a very long time to get back to me. I ended up giving the person their money back. This then was supposed to be relisted and I don't know what happened, but it ended up sitting in our inventory for like six months until we did a total store inventory, which we just found this dress a couple months ago when we did that. So I found this dress and looked at it and I was like, well, we'll go ahead and get it relisted again because I bet I can ask quite a bit of money for this. Notice those stains again, realize why it had been returned. So I took it home and washed it. All the stains came out, but it was still missing its size tag and its material tag. I listed for much lower than before because I just wanted to see this go, but it eventually sold for an offer of $75.00 which is really good because like I said, this has been through quite a bit of stuff and I am happy to see it go. I almost didn't relist it just because I was so frustrated with it, but I'm glad I did because that's a good return on investment and in the end it was worth it. But you guys know what I'm talking about. Some of those items you just, you just don't want to sell even if they're going to bring you good money. Moving on to some of the Poshmark sales, I have a few of these actually. I know we've talked about in several of our thrifting videos, picking up Madewell jeans. A lot of people say that they don't sell for them anymore. We still pick them up if they're in good condition, regardless of style, regardless of size, because on Poshmark, I list them still on both eBay and Poshmark, but they almost always sell on Poshmark. Much better following on Poshmark, and they usually sell anywhere from $25 to like $40 on Poshmark, so I just kind of know that's where they're going to end up. These are a pair of 9-inch high-rise skinny jeans. They had some distressing, and they were a little bit dark washed. We picked these ones up for $4.99, and they sold for $27 on Poshmark. These ones were a pair of the curvy high-rise Madewell jeans. These were size 30, so a little bit larger size, and they sold for $36. We paid $6.99 for these. And this last Madewell jean we paid $4.75 for. It was the California Den Demi Boot, but they were a smaller size and a size 24, so we listed these a little bit lower. And these ones sold for $30. So all in all, pretty good sales with Madewell on Poshmark this past week. And if you have any Madewell jeans and you currently cross post from eBay to Poshmark, I would definitely recommend getting those over to Poshmark. 
Next up is a pair of Duluthman's pants. And these ones we paid $6.99 for. They sold for $36. This brand, only certain pieces sell, and you really have to be careful of the size now, I've noticed. I've used to pick up everything in this brand, but I think you have to be kind of picky with this now. These were the Flex Firehose Pants, which are a very popular style in this brand. They were size 36 by 30, and they sold for $36. This was something I just recently picked up. I paid $4.29 for it, and I knew I wasn't going to get much for it, but it did have a pretty good sell-through rate. So this is a vintage 80s Phantom of the Off Opera graphic t-shirt, and surprisingly, there was a lot of this online. There, there were a lot of them. Usually with vintage, there's only a couple. This exact shirt from the 80s a lot of people had, but a lot of people have purchased. So I know I was going to get about 20 to $25 for it. This ended up selling on Poshmark for 25. If you see the shirt, you should expect about 20 to $25 as well. This next one is a pair of American Eagle jeans. We are very picky with American Eagle these days. These are the high rise skinny kick jeans in a size 20 new attacks. We paid $6.99 for these, which is paying quite a bit for American Eagle jeans, but they sold for 35, which is a great return on investment. One thing I've noticed with American Eagle jeans is you definitely want to look for larger sizes and anything but the skinny, anything that's boot cut, anything that's flare, those tend to perform better. And also sometimes distressing can help to add value. Next up is Zaya Activewear. I have a love-hate relationship with this brand, but I'm glad to see some of this stuff is starting to sell over on Poshmark. We paid $4.89 and this one sold for $30. It's just a pair of color block ruched leggings. These are a size 14, which is why I think they sold quicker than some of the other ones. I think this is going to be a brand kind of like Madewell where it sells better on Poshmark. This one is an outdoorsy brand called Cool, K-U-H-L. I've mentioned this in a lot of What Sold videos. This I pick up in almost everything if it's in the men's department and I'm a little bit pickier in the women's. These shorts we paid $4.89 for and a pair of pre-owned shorts, guys, sold for $36. Unbelievable. Love this brand. Next up is a Chico's jacket. This is a brand I come across all the time but put back most of it. This was a size two, which I think it looks like is a size medium. That doesn't seem right for some reason, but we listed it as a size medium and gave measurements. This is just a very unique jacket. I come across wacky jackets and Chico's all the time, but like I said, I leave almost all of them behind. I just really liked the color scheme of this one and I thought it was very bohemian. We also got these at the bin, so it was pretty cheap and it ended up selling for $35 on Poshmark. Next up is a tried and true bread and butter piece for us. This is a Travis Matthew polo. You guys have probably seen us talk about this quite a bit. This one had a little bit of wear on the collar, which we did make sure to note. And we picked this up for $2.99. It sold for $25, which is usually what I get for these shirts. If they have print on them, I usually list them closer to 30. You guys might remember all the Eileen Fisher pieces that we got in that one thrift haul a while ago. We're almost sold out of all of them, but we do have some stragglers, which I expect to sell during this fall season pretty quickly because they're almost all sweaters. Eileen Fisher retails for a ton. You can see that this sweater, it's a merino wool rib long sleeve sweater with a funnel neck tops, uh, was retailing for $248. I also had a good size. It was a size large and again, new with tags. Listed these pretty high. We picked these up for $4.89 each and they've all been selling for about $75 to $85. This one in particular sold for $85 on Poshmark. You definitely want to keep your eye out for Eileen Fisher because even if this was pre-owned, we probably could have gotten about $40 bucks for it. Next up is a newer athletic brand to me. It is Alpha Leads, and we've been experimenting with this one as well. Not a lot of great comps on eBay for it, but it does seem to perform better on Poshmark. So we've been picking it up and cross posting it over there. I paid just $2 for this muscle tank. It was a size extra, extra small, which in my opinion is a little bit risky with brands, but I ended up selling pretty quickly for $20. This is another Ben's pickup. This is the brand Miracle Suit. And to look at it and to feel it, 
to me does not feel like high quality material, but this brand in swimsuits has a really, really good following. So definitely want to keep your eye out for that. This sold in the colder weather just this past week for $30. And again, we picked it up at the bins. This is the last of those Skechers Y2K shoes that we sold. I know I told you guys we picked up quite a bit of these maybe a few months back. This is the last one of them to sell. They were all smaller sizes and surprisingly the other ones sold pretty quickly, but this one got left behind. I'm glad we did get it though. We paid $6.99 for it and it ended up selling for $40. And one thing that I think helped to sell it was making sure we put Y2K in there and also a block heel chunky boots, all great keywords for something like this. And I've been asking myself, because a lot of the sandals I'm pretty familiar with in the Y2K style, but moving into fall and winter, I'm not sure what to look for. This is definitely a style I would look for that is closed toe, but still Y2K um, for fall and winter. This is a brand I've really been enjoying picking up. It is Talbots. I am becoming kind of picky with it. I try to only stick to the larger sizes. This one was an extra large. And I try to stick to the more unique substantial pieces. This was a multicolor button down cardigan and had embroidered French words on it. Again, a size extra large. I paid $4.69. It sold for $27 on Poshmark. This is another great pickup. This is something I've been picking up. Um, I do do my comp on the size and the style because I think that does matter in this brand. But in general, this brand has a pretty good sell through rate and it was a brand that I was passing on in the past. It is Judy Blue. These are a size 14 and they are the skinny fit. I paid $4.75 for these and this one sold for $40 on Poshmark. Another pair of women's pants, again with Catherine's. This is a style I'd look for. It is the Suprema Collection in a size 2X pull-on pant. Um, these ones were new with tags. We paid $4.89 and they sold for $30. Again, a great uh, plus size brand to be on the lookout for. Just make sure to do your comps on the style. And lastly, as one of my favorite brands to sell in the women's department, also the men's, but I find more of it in the women's, it's Hot Topic. Anything Hot Topic collaboration seems to perform really well. This is an anime bib dress by, I think it's a show, Fruit Baskets. And I included Kawaii Cosplay because I saw a very similar dress with the same uh, subject matter on it. So I included this in my keyword. This dress sold very quickly and had a lot of interest on both platforms. And this sold for $40. And again, guys, it's just a Hot Topic piece. So keep your eye out for Hot Topic collaborations and also anime collaborations. All right, you guys, so that's it for what sold this week. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching. Again, if you're not already and you would like to be, don't forget to subscribe down below and hit the notification bell. I'd love to see you guys commenting on the channel and get to know you a little bit. Thank you guys so much for watching as always, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.